good morning, good morning. God bless you. Praise God for you being with us. Thank God for everyone who's on the line. Amen. Bishop Marlon Harvin, God bless you, man of God. Good to see you, man. Praise God. I pray that you and Lady Tisha are doing well. Lady Harvin are doing well, man. Good to see you. Praise God. Listen, thank God for all of you being with us. Let's uh, let's get our likes and our shares rolling. And we're going to be ready to get started in just a moment. Amen. Please forgive my slight tardiness there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Bishop Greathouse. Man of God. Pastor Greathouse. Good to see you, man. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. Ah, Jesus. Yeah. Let's get our likes and shares. Please like and share the video. Please like and share the, the, video, the video. Amen. Please like and share the video. Hallelujah. Ah, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. God bless you. Man, so good to see you. Man, we got a star-studded cast on this morning. Praise God for y'all being on. Amen. Um, as, again, let's please like and share the video. Let's like and share the video. Let me get my, my likes and shares out here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Take just a couple of moments and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Hallelujah. 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 All right. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It's certainly good to see, as I said, each and every one of you on the line this morning. Uh, we're certainly excited to have this time with you, man, and we, we thank God for you. Listen, we bless God for um, for you being on the line this morning, and um, and man, we're so excited. Um, we're so excited uh, to, to be with you, to be with you, to be with you, and uh, and man, we're just um, man. Ah Jesus. Ah Jesus. We're, we're excited to be with you. We're just we're just we're just glad to be here this morning. Um, 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 and we're we're blessed to we're blessed to to be with you for another session of Inspire AM. And 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 uh we thank God for all of our impact family, our Kingdom Agenda Fellowship friends for being here. Let me first of all say, man, what an amazing worship experience on yesterday. We had a blast in the impact experience yesterday. I mean, it was totally just blown. God just blew our minds. But we thank God for his presence. And it's and and, and it is it is good morning, Bishop McCoy, son. God bless you. Um it, it is no mistake that probably in your worship services you experienced um, an amazing time on yesterday because we've just entered into another another season, another season. Um, we're in the month now of Heshvan. Heshvan. Now uh, uh, we're, we're, we've been talking uh, time and season, helping you understand how we're progressing in kingdom. Um, I'm so excited um, because we're in a new season uh, where it seems that everything is dying, but really we're moving to underground reproduction. In other words, the, the, everything is starting to move now toward hibernation and preparing for winter. Watch this. The farm equipment's being put up. Um, the harvesting is stopped. Um, and we're now moving toward our time of internal reparation, our time of internal um, repair, our time of internal restructure. Now, why do we say this? We say this because if you notice, even nature moves in cycles. There are four seasons in a year. Um, they're, 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 and, and each season has with it its, 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 its um, assets and its deficits. Amen. Now, what I want to tell you over this next month and the next couple of weeks, it may look like nothing's happening, but something's happening. 
Oh God, it may look like nothing's happening, but something's happening. Why? Because our development is going to be internal. It's going to be at the character level. It's going to be at the spirit level. And the, while the world may not see it, it may not be as visible and as, and as, and as apparent. You're going to change over these next few months. And that's what I want to talk about for a little bit. I want to talk about, um, just for a moment, um, um, yesterday, um, 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 the Lord, the, the Lord hit me, the Lord hit me with, the Lord hit me with, um, um, a word for the people to not be afraid of a particular thing. And that's what I want to talk about just, just a little bit today. I want to talk about this just a little bit today. Um, um, I want to talk about being reinvented or to reinvent yourself. And one of the things that I know that some of you are experiencing right now is you're, ex you're self-examining and you're saying, I've got to change something. What, uh, um, let me say congratulations before I move further to um, Bishop Chris Sanders down in Pensacola, Alabama. We were down for his consecration on yesterday. Um, Pat, uh, uh, Chief, uh, Chief, uh, Chief uh, Presiding Bishop uh, Harold Daniels of Ruach, Apostle Joseph Dean, um, Apostle Alvin Howard, I mean Bishop Ho Alvin Howard and myself and, and several other of the bishops of our fellowships went down to celebrate this man of God. And what a wonderful time we had. But one of the things that <clears throat> Apostle Dean and I discussed on, on, on Saturday that I want to point out to us is you have to always own your part in everything that happens in your life. You got to own your part in everything that happens in your life. That's both the good and the bad. Listen, if negative things are happening to you, you cannot be a person who always makes it be an external issue. You've got to learn how to deal with some things internally because watch this. What you're blaming everybody else for is probably a problem within yourself. And we have to be careful of this. And so I want to challenge us, watch this, to re-examine both the successes and the failures both the maturity and the immaturity, both the development and the development needs in your life. And what role do Y-O-U play in that? Now, I know some people will say, you know, under grace that God, you know, is, has, has this perfect plan for us and he's worked all this out and it's done. But watch this. God never takes away volition from you. Now, while through his, watch this, through his foreknowledge, through his predestination, he has set a course for your life. And let me go ahead, let me go ahead and, um, Mr. Mark, let's, let's put up a couple of scriptures real quick. I want to go to the book of Ephesians. Go to Ephesians, the second chapter. Ephesians 2, this is one of my favorite passages. One of my favorite passages of all time. <laughs> Uh, read the second chapter of Ephesians, but I want to look at Ephesians 2, verse 10. Ephesians 2, 10. Make a note of that. The Bible says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. In other words, God has, has already set some things in place. He has ordained them. He has prepared them before time. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the plans I have for you. Thoughts that you would prosper. He, he, he has a plan for you, but watch this. If his plan is, is in place, it does not guarantee that he's going to control you. Watch this. He gave you free will and a volition, but through his, watch this, through his ordination, through his predestination, he set a plan. But through his foreknowledge, he knows the decisions that you're going to make. Hallelujah. He already knows your thinking. He Watch this. He knows your success before you're ever successful. And he knows your sin before you ever sin. In other words, that there's nothing that escapes the sovereignty of your God. See, these are things the church don't want to talk about much. He knows you in your good days and your bad days. He knows everything about you. He he, nothing, nothing escapes his eye, his understanding, or his predestination. But watch this. Let me, let me, let me also point you to another scripture. I want to point out to you very, very quick. He knows you. Watch this. And I want to, I want to work at. I'm going to look at Romans eight, Romans chapter eight. 
I want to I want to deal I want to look at verses 27 through 30. Romans 8 27 through 30. We we're, we're talking about reinventing yourself. Cuz watch this. And I haven't gotten to my key verse yet that I want to push to you today. Hallelujah. One of the things we have to understand is that even though God has a plan, you're going to go through several, watch this, several versions of yourself. Ah, Jesus. You're going to go through several seasons of change in your life and you cannot be afraid to be different. You cannot be afraid to reinvent yourself. While your core values must remain the same and remain Christ, you may not do the same thing every time the same way. Yes, you want consistency and discipline, but you have to be open to change. And that is something that most folks fear. Romans 8, verse 27 through 30, and I'm going to jump all the way. Ah, watch, watch this. Ah. Ah. For he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. Watch this. He said that he that searches the heart of men knows what God's mind is in the Holy Spirit toward men. Watch this. Because he make an intercession for the saints. Watch this. According to what they want. Uh, no, that's not how he makes intercession. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So while you're praying one thing, Holy Spirit can be praying something totally different. Why? Because the result you're looking for may not be the will of God. I was I was just Bishop Reginald Wells of Selma, Alabama, just rocked us yesterday. And I posted as a result of his teaching something that he said in the sermon is that the church needs to introduce people to the will of God. The will of God, because sometimes what you've got to understand is the will will take you through a wilderness experience. Mm. The will will take you through your Gethsemane. The will will take you through your Golgothas. The will, you got to understand this. We are preaching such a, 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 a people-centered gospel that we want everybody to think that it's going to be apple pie in the sky and every day is going to be easy and God is their cosmic Santa Claus. This is not the truth of scripture. The truth of scripture is, is you got to work out your own soul salvation. The truth of scripture is you got to put your own hand to the plow. The truth of scripture is that some days you're going to be challenged and you need to understand that just because you got a problem doesn't mean you're out of the will. You just may be in your Gethsemane experience. You may just be in your wilderness experience. You've got to understand that every day you cannot be on a mount of transfiguration on a hilltop shouting and dancing. There are going to be some days where, watch this, your circumstances are going to build your character. Oh, God. We were, we were passing by a church uh, yesterday. We didn't even see the church. We just saw the sign. Watch this. Watch this. And, and I love this. And I joked with Apostle Dean. I called him on the phone. I said, hey, we're changing the name of all of our fellowships because we saw, we saw, and we, this is a joke. This is not an official announcement. This is a joke. Watch this. But we passed by a church by, uh, down the road and we saw a sign for a church that said, watch this, Cross and Crown Baptist Church. Cross and Crown. In other words, there's no crown without a cross. There's no victory without some suffering and some warfare. And why am I telling this? Because you got to be willing to reinvent yourself. You got to be willing to go through the struggle to be different. What do I mean? And I'm coming to my main scripture. I haven't even gotten to it yet. What do I mean when I say reinvent? When you, when you look up just, just by way of definition, the dictionary says by, by, by way of definition, watch this, when you reinvent it is a verb that means, watch this, to change something. Watch this, to change something so much that it appears to be entirely new. Oh! Watch this, so much that it appears to be entirely new. Ch to, to reinvent means to change something so much 
that it appears to be entirely new. So watch this. I know many of you right now are looking internally, internally, and, and, and you're, you're, you're self-reflecting. You're, you're having retrospective moments and you're saying, I know this is the Holy Spirit. You're saying, I got to do something different. I need to, I need to change something. I need to be, I need to do better right here in this area. I need this to change about my life. You, you're starting to redefine some goals. You're starting to reset some things. Why? Because we're in this season of Heshbon. Now watch this. What is Heshbon? Hesvan is a month, watch this, where we deal with, watch this, mm, we deal with, with, with rest, watch this, we deal with rest, but we also, watch this, have to deal with, watch this, some underground growth, hallelujah, so watch this, it's a season of new beginnings, peace, and rest, so watch this, the old person that you were last month needs to have some new beginning this month. Listen, I know you saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. That's your salvation. But now I'm talking your sanctification. See, sanctification, watch this, is not just about you being cleaner. Sanctification is about you being, watch this, so new that your old man ain't recognized no more. Sanctification is about you being so new that your old man ain't even recognized no more. Sanctification reinvents you in a process of change. So what you got to understand is this. You cannot fear change. Now here's, here's a key point I got to push to you. You cannot become so comfortable in your old self that your new nature cannot spring forth. <laughs> we, we we were laughing in, in, in the introduction yesterday to the word. Uh, Bishop Wells stood up <laughs> and he said, listen, I, I wanted to, I, when I was doing my own thing, I wanted to be a player, player, player. I wanted to be a player, but the Lord said I had to be a preacher. <laughs> Watch this. Let me, let me, let me challenge you on this. And I want you to think about this in your life. I want to think, think about this in your life. What did you plan on being that you have yet to achieve? Watch this. What did you plan on being that you have yet to achieve? Now, that's, that, that's a dot, dot, dot. That's an ellipsis because I want to make some points here. A lot of times what your dream is is not the will. When I left home and I left the military... I left for the military. I said I was going to the United States Air Force. I was going to um, 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 get my degree, get my commission, and I was going to retire at least, at least a full bird colonel from the United States Air Force. That was my personal goal. <laughs> I went to the military. I got my degree. After 13 years, I planned on it in four. After 13 years, I got a degree. Watch this. And the second thing is, I retired from the military as a tech sergeant. Didn't get anywhere near a colonel. And one day I was fussing with God. I was in some private meditation time. I'm fussing with God saying, God, I had these plans and I wanted to do this and I wanted to do that. And I, and, and I wanted to be this colonel and my life would be different. And the Holy Spirit grabbed me. Said to me, listen, why are you, trying, why are you crying about being a colonel in the Air Force? Watch this when I've made you a general in the spirit. Now, I don't know that you know military rank, but a general for our ranks, a colonel. He says, I've taken you and put you where I want you to be. Watch this. How much of your life are you considering failure and disappointment because you won't allow God to reinvent you by his spirit? You got this goal that I'm going, I'm going to go do X, Y, Z. And it doesn't happen X, Y, Z. It happens D, F, A. It comes in a different order. And you frustrated and disappointed when you won't just rest in God and reinvent for where you're standing. Ah! You won't rest in God and reinvent for where you're standing. You, 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 you so frustrated trying to be something that God never willed for you to do. And he's trying to watch this. He's trying to will and do through you. But you're in constant conflict 
Because what he's trying to will and do, you fight him. Because you insist on being something that he didn't ordain you to be. I told you he created you for good works before the foundation of the world. He already knows the plan for you. So watch this. We, we're supposed to be stumbling through the darkness of time trying to find God and where his will is and what his purpose is. We should be seeking him and we'll get what he wants for us. Let me say it again. We should be seeking him through his spirit and then we'll get what he wants for our lives. But what we got to understand is we got to be, we cannot be afraid to reinvent. We can't be afraid to change. Now, let me get to my core verse that I want to point to. I haven't even gotten to my subject yet. Ah, ah, I didn't get to the subject. I want to go to 1 Samuel, the 10th chapter. 1 Samuel 10. And I want you to look at verses 1 through 8. Ah. <coughs> I, want, I want you to look at verses 1 through 8. That's the first context. And then I want to also... Um, I want to also, that's that's the prophetic portion of it. That's the instructional part of it. And then I also want to look um, at the context. I'm going to give you two contexts. The prophetic version of it is one through eight. The manifestation of it, watch this. Ooh, Jesus. The manifestation of it, mm, um, the manifestation of it is, um, Verses nine through sixteen. So I want two, I want two contexts put up. First Samuel chapter ten, one through eight, and then First Samuel chapter ten, nine through sixteen. Now, why am I saying this? And, it, and, and listen, it's because God set some things in place, and they got to manifest in your life. Now He will He will and, and and Bishop Wells dealt with this some yesterday. He will watch this. Put prophetic words over your life, oracles to speak in your life that must manifest in your life. And, and, and a lot of the things that have spoken, they're going to come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. They're going to come to pass in your life. So let me give you these two contexts. And I want to I want to compare two verses. I want to compare two verses. I want to compare 1 Samuel chapter 10. I want to look at verse um. Uh, verse 6, verse 6, and I also want to look at verse 10. I think it's verse 6. Uh, yes, verse 6 and verse 10. Verse 6 and verse 10 are our key verses. Now, I want you to read those two contexts for me. My time is almost up. I've got two minutes. But what I'm saying to you is this. Don't be afraid to reinvent yourself. Don't be afraid to change because God is an agent. The Holy Spirit is an agent of change. He does not want you to stay where you are today. You are on a progressive manifestation of a new you. Thank you, Jesus. Watch this. You are on a pro progressive manifestation of a new you. They hadn't seen all that you're becoming yet because all the word God spoke over you hadn't totally manifested yet. Watch this. I'm going to read verse 6, and I'm going to read verse 10. Yeah. Is that what I'm going to read? Yeah. Verse 6 and verse 10. Here's the prophetic utterance. The instruction that comes in verse 1 through 8, I want to capsulize down to verse 6. Watch this. Here's the instruction. And the Spirit of the Lord, watch this, will come upon thee. The Spirit of the Lord is going to fall on you, Saul. This is Samuel speaking to Saul. He's anointing Saul with oil. He's about to have um, this experience. And he's about to become someone else. Watch this. His name is still going to be Saul, but his oil is going to be different. Oh, God. Watch this. Watch this. What if my name remained Keith, but my oil was different? Ah! What if your name remained Adrian, but your oil was different? What if your name remained Martha, but your oil was different? What if your name remained Lagora, but your oil was different? What if your, what if your name remained Tanja or Larry or whoever your name is? What if your name remained the same, but your nature was different? Then what they knew, watch this, K-N-E-W from the past, 
would be new N-E-W in their present. Let me say it again. What they knew, K-N-E-W in the past, would be new N-E-W in the present. Thank you, Jesus. Watch this. Verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, watch this, and shall be turned into another man. Another man. He says the Spirit of the Lord is going to fall on you. The Spirit of God is going to fall on you, and you're going to be, watch this, a different man. Another man. You're going to be, you, listen, you're going to be further down the road. This word actually mean akar akar means another a other or following it means watch this an other or different so watch this there's a man watch this that you've got to become that's going to follow the man you are today there's a person that God wants to manifest in this process of sanctification that's different than you are today it's the same, and watch this, you're still saved, but he's moving you and growing you. Ah! Watch this, verse 6 says, when the spirit comes, you're going to be another man. But watch this. Verse 10 says, mm. the Bible says, watch this, watch this, watch this. The Bible says in verse 10, and when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the spirit of God came upon him, watch this, and he prophesied among them. So who was this new man that he was? Hallelujah. He was becoming a king, but watch this. Mm. When he was anointed by Samuel, mm, and the Holy Spirit rested on him, he changed into the prophet and began to speak as an oracle of God. What happens if you are unafraid to reinvent and you don't worry about what people think and the person you were last week on your job is not the same person they get this week on the, on the job. They get a better person, more loving, more caring, more kind, more Christ. What if, what if, what if you were not afraid to reinvent yourself? What if, watch this, oh, watch this. Now let me, let me, oh, let me hit this real quick. My time is almost gone. Notice this, he's standing among a company of prophets. He's standing on the hill among a company of people, watch this, who speak as oracles of God. Listen, don't let, please don't allow familiarity to stunt your spiritual growth. Let me say it again. Please, and I'm wrapping up, don't allow familiarity to stunt your spiritual growth. Just because they expect you to always be broke, busted, and disgusted. And that's what you hanging out with. You need to change your circle. And move into a circle where some folks speaking prosperity. And living prosperity. And manifesting disciplined lives that produce prosperity. You need to watch the company you keeping. If you standing among lies. You're going to only be able to hear lies. If you, if you hanging out. Watch this. With a company of liars then you can only hear a, comp a, a, a compliment of lies. If you hang out with men who are full of truth, then you can only hear truth. Don't let the familiarity of your circle stunt your spiritual growth. What you got around you? Who your partner? Who's your partner? Who can you have some intelligent spiritual discussion with? Are you always the smartest thing in your circle? Come on, somebody. You got to be unafraid to reinvent yourself. Are you willing in this season to become another man? Now, I'm going to talk about the two position and the eight position a little bit yesterday. Tomorrow, I don't have time, but it's about agreement. If two or three and then eight, the number of new beginnings, we'll talk about that. But listen, keep your name, but change your nature. Reinvent yourself. Reinvent yourself. Come on, come on, Mother Maude. I got to stop. I got so much more, but I got to stop because I got to get to work. Come on, Mother. Thank you, Father. Lord God, what a blessing it is 
for us to come before you early in the morning and receive your word. I thank you, glory to God, for this day, for this is a day we've never seen before. Yet you allowed us to come before you and hear your word being talked to us. I thank you for the anointed teaching of your word that goes forth early in the morning. We are blessed people. We are blessed to be called by you. We are blessed to be saved because of you. We are blessed to be in the land of the living and knowing whose we are and who we are. We are blessed to have the mind of Christ. We are blessed to have the anointing on us because you put your anointing on us. Glory to God. You put your word in us. You give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I so thank you and I praise you. Glory. Hey, listen, fam. Facebook fam, we love you. We praise God for you. Don't be afraid to reinvent yourself. Don't be afraid to change your clothes. Don't be afraid to do something different. And more than anything, let God deal with you internally. Let him change you inside out. Hallelujah. Inside out. I promise you it's going to be great for you. Listen, um, have a great day today. Got to get out of here. Don't forget, be inspired, be lifted, and let's go manifest. Have a wonderful day.